is also the God of the bad time and of course God of the day is still God in the night and I trust that the Lord God Almighty will make you an all weather Christian in the name of Jesus let's have some words of prayers Father we thank you thank you so much Lord because you are there for us at all time we thank you so much you have our interests at heart and lord you are working out your purpose over our lives father we worship you be exalted and we praise in jesus name lord i ask that jehovah this morning you will speak to us through your word expressly in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat. Good morning, church. Um, I want to read from First Samuel chapter 17. I will not read all the scriptures. Uh, we can read from verse 20 to verse 27 but if you look at uh, towards the end of that start verse 27 I read amen excuse me verse 29 rather and David said what have I now done is there not a cause? Is there not is there not a reason? I'm speaking on prepared for a time like this. Prepared for a time like this. We can always also say build built for a time like this fashioned for a time like this raised for a time like this so we are prepared for seasons of life when you find yourself at a season of life you are not there by emergency it is not just by chance it's not a stroke of luck God knows the seasons of our lives God knows what you are going to pass through but it will be beautiful for someone to be prepared for the times and seasons of life and that's what I'm talking about prepared for a time like this the background of the story was that David was asked by his father Jesse to go to the battlefield at that particular time there was a battle set array between the Philistines and the Israelites and of course the head of Israel army was King Saul himself why the head of the Philistines army was uh, the man called Goliath and by the time to go and visit his brothers he has three of his brothers that were part of the generals you know in the military formation of the Israelites working under uh, um, uh, you know Saul and by the time he got there to see their welfare to give them some food and to bring report back to their father so when he got there he saw that there was something going on he saw a giant coming out harassing all the hosts of the Israel army you know speaking against the God of Israel and he began to wonder 
Israelite army were not doing anything about it. Saul, the heir, the king, and the head of the uh, of the military formation was nowhere to be found. And he was now finding out who is this person. They say, ah, hmm, that man, that's how he has been coming out to harass us. Nobody can confront this man. Then he now said that, uh, that what, look, what, what, what is to be done? If somebody is going to remove this shame from Israel. And they said, ah, if somebody is able to confront this man, the king has said, at any of the military uh, uh, officers that can come out one on one, you know, to fight, because that is the way of uh, fighting or battle in those days. There must be a captain from uh, one uh, side, another head from the other side. They will confront themselves first. And when, they are, when one is able to defeat the others, then other soldiers from the other side will now uh, uh, um, rush to fight you know, against the other side. Because if your captain is defeated, you know that the whole military formation is defeated. And so the king has even promised to give his daughter to marry to such a person, to give him some of the property materials, you know, uh, 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 benefits and so on and so forth but that was not what mattered to uh, David of course he was just a teenager and David said who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is this person that is speaking against God of Israel and the soldiers of Israel as I'm going to go and confront so it was in this discussion with some of these soldiers who were able to you know uh, to discuss with him when his brother Eliab saw him and said oh boy why are you here he said my father sent me to come and visit you and to give things no I know that I know the pride in your heart I know you want to see the battle formation you want to witness what is going on on the battlefield that's why you have come and that is where the statement came that David said what have I done now is there not a cause and that word is there not a cause is what I changed that what David was saying is that I am prepared for a time like this there is a reason why I am here I'm prepared for a time like this don't forget that David has been anointed in his father's house and after that exercise when he was anointed he actually went back to the field to take care of the family animals but it was from that field like I always say that look God will test you he will test your faithfulness before he begins to give you higher responsibility he will test your faithfulness before he will even begin to bless you the other time seven children were at home the last born was the one that was on the field taking care of the family business if you don't understand that rearing of the animals all those things they are the business of the family all other seven were not prepared were not ready to take care of the family business it was only the last born the small boy was the one that was on the field day and night both in the rain both in the cold both in the sun to take charge of the business of the family and by the time they were the seven of them were rejected and uh, uh, and the summer said is there no any other person are these all your sons jesse god has spoken to me that he has prepared a king in your family now you have brought all your son from heliab to shama and so on and so forth the seven of them and god said i've rejected all these ones is this all your children and the man said well it remains the last born he's a small boy for a kind of uh, 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 consideration like this <laughs> how can you move from number one to seven you don't see someone that is qualified is the last born and someone said we are not going to sit down until it's here and so they sent to him now he has to hand over the family business the animals he gave it i mean hand them over to one of his colleagues the keepers and said please my parents have sent for me i don't know what is happening at home he left them and he ran you know to home on of course getting home and god said that is him the bible said he was anointed in the midst of his brethren but come to look at to, to think of it after he was anointed to be king 
he left that place to where he went back you know to the field to keep on doing what he was trained to do what he has been his passion taking care of the family business now look at it three of his brothers elder, uh, elder brothers they were with Saul on the battlefield the remaining four where were they they were at home now the father wanted to send someone to go and see the welfare and to give food for those who are on the battlefield the other four were useless they were not available the father has to send back to the bush to go and call this same last born please come my son i want to send you to go and visit your elder brothers let me tell you god will always test you with responsibility god will test you with assignments my prayer is that the day of your test may you not murmur may you not complain may you be found prepared this young man was prepared at all time for you teenagers in the house your journey to excellence your journey to greatness has started already because david was in the same age bracket you know like you are and he was a faithful boy he was faithful he was serving he was there he was dutiful and so anytime the father asked him to do something yes sir when he's given an assignment yes sir he didn't say that ah daddy is it because of sending people to the, somebody to the field to give my brothers you know food and to see their welfare what are the other people doing i know that that is how some people complain in the in the department and said why is it i'm the only one what what about others your name is not others you have a name and you have a register with the almighty god god is keeping an your account god is writing something about your life hallelujah it depends on the way you want to carry yourself it depends on what you want heaven to know you for this boy was known you know to heaven as responsible as dependable as someone who is trustworthy as someone who is bold who is courageous as someone who is ready to serve at all times in any circumstance and so when he was saying that he came he was already the oil of god was upon his life and so when he got there and said what is going on here and Helia was saying that it is because you are proud i know the pride of your heart what was he talking about the other time he was anointed as king you know i know that you want to see the battle what does the young person want to come and say on the battlefield but because this young man knew that he was prepared for every season of life he said i am prepared there is a cause why i'm why i'm here anywhere i find myself there is something to be done there is always a reason there is always a purpose said there is a cause hallelujah that's why i said is there not a cause i am prepared i don't just find myself in a place without purpose there is a reason for every phase of my life do you understand that you are in this church it's not by accident there is a purpose for it you are doing that business you are doing for a purpose you find yourself interacting with something there is a reason but are you prepared for these seasons of life are you prepared for this purpose shout hallelujah that's why he now said is there not a cause i am here is there not a reason i'm prepared i am here it is not by accident that my father sent me god of heaven knew that i'm going to witness this and because i am prepared god has prepared me to know what to do in this circumstance you know the rest of the story if you read on to that verse 37 you discover that he said and that they now took him to king saul and said we have seen a, a person who want to confront goliath and when Saul saw him, you know, in his hiding, you know, there is a place where commander is there with all the, uh, the, 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 the soldiers surrounding him, at least to protect the king 
who is also the commander in chief and they took him and said I'm sure when Paul Saul saw him Saul would have smiled but you know it's a battle time you may not be able to laugh just smile in his mind and say oh, small boy he doesn't know anything small boy he just look at him and say you are a small boy and <laughs> you can't die cheaply at least I'm still a king it is not young boy that should die this man that you are looking at can you see his height compared to yours he has been a warrior from his time of his youth before he assumed the position of the commander of in chief of the philistines army he's been long in the on the battle so you are just a small boy you are a young boy you don't know anything about war you have never even been enlisted you know as part of the uh, of, uh, of the military of israel now you are coming from nowhere no weapon nothing and the man began to give he began to give testimony i mean david i said king live forever let me tell you about myself i may not know how you are doing your battle but while i was keeping my father's sheep, and there came a lion you can see it on the screen and a bear and took a lamp out of the flock what happened the next verse and i went out after him and smote him now he was not saying and smote it he was looking at that animal as a personality all right i smote him <laughs> he was doing a comparison in his heart if Perry, i'm sorry if it was them if a goliath is him the lion is as good as him as goliath the bear is as good to be referred to as him as goliath in other words goliath and the animals they are the same praise god that that guy you look at king that you're afraid of is an animal he's as good as an animal he cannot be stronger than a lion that i've dealt with and of course what happened i delivered out of his mouth and when he arose when he the animal now he the company of goliath when he arose against me i caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him look at the next verse he said verse 36 thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, saying he had defiled the armies of the living God. He's an animal. They were looking at Goliath, he was seen an animal. He was seen an animal that is not as strong as lion that I've dealt with. He was seen an animal that is not as strong as a bear that I've dealt with. He said, If your servant can do this this uncircumcised philistine will just be as good as one of them hallelujah look at the next verse verse 38 media media verse 38 and saul ham david with his hammer no look go back to that verse 37 i want to bring out something there and Saul said, that's the love verse, unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. You see, when you know what you are prepared for, you will silence every argument. If you know how you have been built in the realm of the spirit, there is no battle that will scare you. And every person that is kind trying to discourage you, they will give up at one point. And Saul said, go. The Lord of Israel be with you. Whether that prayer was from the heart of, uh, of uh, Saul or not, David could not tell. Hallelujah. David could not tell. Whether that prayer is genuine or not, is something else. Maybe Saul was just in his mind and said, I am about we he's been warned. And since then he wants to go and let him go at least it's not even part of the military you know formation of israel if we lose this one but he now have a second thought that verse 38 and say okay 
if you want to go there is a way to go and Saul harmed David with his hammer and he put an helmet of brass upon his head in other words if you are going to even die you should not die cheaply <coughs> praise God this is what I used to protect myself when I want to go and fight but Ogak could not use it for himself again he now put the helmet upon or brass upon his head and he hung him with a coat of mail look at the next verse and David guarded, guarded his sword sword of Saul a small boy carrying that kind of sword upon his armor and he has said to go for he had not proven he has not used things like this before and David said unto Saul ah I cannot go with this for I have not proved them and David put them off him hallelujah you see a man that is prepared what you need is the anointing what you need is the Holy Spirit the man who was prepared he has been built up by the spirit of the living God all this physical hammer and decoration is immaterial he said I have not proved it in fact he cannot even carry himself because they were too heavy for him he has not you know some of you when you see gun when the military carries uh, you know, uh, gun you will think it is easy to carry gun go and carry one let them even put it in your hand all right and so all right whether it is rubber bullet that is there i say okay a range shoot at a particular range it is then you will know that to carry gun is not a child's play you just like a big gun just a palm carrying gun shooting gun if you see the way it vibrates if you see the way it vibrates somebody who is not physically strong cannot shoot gun praise the lord that's why they have been trained trained how to handle gun how to carry it how to you know uh, look at the ring how to be able to to be focused and it takes a lot of military you know uh, uh, training and that's why so many people when they are passing through military training they die in the course of training if you say you want to be a soldier you go to nda you will have signed off your life that the nigerian government the military they will not be responsible if you die in the course of this training praise god you have signed so that they may not even need to send your cops back home hallelujah so it won't be because so if you cannot all those rigor all those training look at our nyc eh, our coppers just tintini one over 100 of the training <laughs> praise god they took them through that within that three weeks you see some people they almost die they will say ah i am tired oh i am weak ah this and the commander say come on come on double up double up double up everybody go up go up go up go up and as some people be begin to face sickness it is then they will remember the sickness of their father's house and we say ah in our father's house eh? if we walk too much like this see we used to have yeah doesn't i say there is something called asthma and they will go to the clinic so when they're supposed to go on to, to the parade do you see them in the clinic those are the lazy one i want to praise god just small training they cannot cope and so they'll be looking for excuse now look at somebody is to be trained in the defense you know in the military hardware, how to handle things now this man said i have not proved it i have not tried it he left all those things because his preparedness is not by the works of the flesh it's not by the works of man he has been built made in the pavilions of the almighty god in the secret place of the most high and that's why we are teaching about quiet time how to gain the presence of god please take you know our power you know what we are doing is not just ordinary sunday school it's called the school of life application maybe they should put school there because God was, you know, telling me of present, sometimes last month, that look, our this service, this um, life application is a school. Praise God. It is a school. We may not go for Sunday school manual. Praise the Lord. When we finish a book, we can take another course. You get my point? It's like a course. 
that if you pass through this another course can be on discipleship can be on evangelism can be on like you know christian ethics can be you know we are making it a school so that if you are in this church for one to two years what they learn in the bible school at least you have learned part of it we call it school of life application you are applying these things in order to prepare you in order to be a weapon in the hands of the almighty hallelujah that is it you have to equip yourself david has been made in the secret place of the Mosai. he has been prepared in the pavilion of the almighty and he was a man of the spirit and we know the rest of the story he just took you know his uh, what you call sling or catapult he took his sling with five smooth stone just one out of the five did the job and Goliath was defeated where are, we, where are we going this morning hallelujah he was prepared there is is there not a cause is there no reason and that is what uh, nay, uh, sorry uh, Mordecai was trying to remind Esther in Esther chapter 4 verse 13 to 14 he said think not I just speak said the Mordecai commanded to answer Esther think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews for if thou altogether hold your peace at this time then shall dear enlargement that is help and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this it was Mordecai that was telling Esther Israel is to be destroyed at a particular day the king has signed the decree Haman has you know made a plot and the king has bought into the plot and you do not know you are in the palace you do not know what is going on you are in the palace you are not aware of what is going on because when uh, 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 Mordecai was mourn in mourning and they had they said your uncle is mourning your uncle is not happy your uncle is sad <laughs> he sent to go and find out uncle is it don't you have money <laughs> don't you what is it why are you sad why are you sad can you imagine that somebody is in the palace a decree was signed in the palace and it's in, it was, she was in the palace she didn't know anything about it let me tell you when the enemy is planning your downfall you will do it perfectly that in your very environment who will be planning against you and you don't know anything about it forces of darkness will be gathering you know to destroy you and you are not challenged about it and that's why I said look have you forgotten that you are a Jew if Jews are killed in other places by this decree do you think you are going to escape you don't know that somebody will remind the king that well a decree has been signed and your wife also is a Jew you think you are going to be saved there he now said who know if you are in the kingdom that is your prepared your preparedness or preparation to be a queen you know in the land God knows about it God is aware that you are in the kingdom you are prepared for a time like this the reason why you are there it is for a purpose you are prepared for a time that's what the same thing he was trying to remember Esther who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom as such time as this there is something something was going to happen to the Jews in the history of the Jews and God who understands who knows the hand from the beginning has prepared things putting things in place and he has made to be a queen you are this in this place for a purpose you are prepared for a purpose you are prepared for a time like this that was what Mordecai was trying to let Esther understand shout hallelujah I said shout hallelujah praise the Lord now I want you to understand prepare for a time like this look at first Samuel chapter 4 okay before that uh, 
I want us to look at um, a scripture. Amen. Before we go to that scripture, you understand that God raised a tribe. Twelve tribes in Israel, there is something that is peculiar to each tribe. Take for example, the Isaacer. The Bible says, God operates wisdom through them. They understand the signs of time and what Israel should do. When you are talking about wisdom, contact the Isaacer. They will give direction. And um, uh, like just in the military, there is what you call Reiki. Is that not so? Reiki, you know, they are the first people to find out about some things they have to do without people notice, you know, to, to know and give signal. And they call them signal also. Praise God. Now, that is what people like uh, uh, Isaac are, what they are meant to be. Amen? That is what they are supposed, I mean, they were doing. And there were others also that God has, has raised. Hallelujah. For one purpose or the other in the land of Israel. Take for example the tribe of uh, um, the, tribe, the, the tribe of Judah. They were raised for a particular purpose. And that's why Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Levites. They were the priests. They were to be in charge of the priesthood. Amen. Amen. They were in the charge of a priesthood. That is how God has ordained it for them to be able to serve purpose in the land of Israel. Then you see, there is a tribe called the tribe of Ephraim. Praise God. I want to look at the scripture talking about the tribes of Ephraim. You will see that Ephraim also has a purpose they were to serve. In the land of Israel. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Excuse me. In the book of um, look at uh, the bar, the bar, look at uh, uh, the book of Second Samuel, no, First Samuel, First Samuel. You will see that the Ephraimites, they were people that were prepared for battle, for war. Amen. Okay, let me let me take it from Numbers chapter two, verse twenty-four. And there were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were an hundred thousand and hundred thousand and eight thousand and hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward in the third rank. There are some of them that were military formation. Hallelujah. They are to serve a purpose as soldiers in the land of Israel. Praise God. The Ephraim. They were in that category for warfare. But you discover that Ephraim, at a particular time, they were failing away. Now, you remember uh, Joshua. Joshua is from the tribe of Ephraim. Amen. Joshua was in the tribe of Ephraim. And also you will see that Shiloh is part of the jurisdiction of the Ephraimites. Are you getting the storyline? I'm, I'm bringing it to you to something. Now, the, the jurisdiction of the Ephraimites. Now, you will now begin to ask, why is it that the ark of God was taken away? Why is it that the ark of God, when uh, the two sons of Eli they accompany the ark to the battlefield but alas 
the ark was taken look at psalm 78 verse 9 psalm 78 verse 9 the children of Ephraim being harmed and carrying bows what happened turn back when in the day of battle can you see that scripture are you there church shall we read it together i want to go the children of Ephraim being harmed and carrying bows turn back in the day of battle may that not be your story the heart were prepared for a purpose but when they supposed to serve that purpose the bible says in the day of battle they turn back when we're looking at the history that i mean this psalm that you are reading what informed this first uh, psalms and i begin to read you read the bible histories what happened that this psalm must have come peradventure at the time israel was fighting with the philistines and because Ephraim, that is where shiloh was situated all right and they are military they are warriors and so when the ark of god was going to the battlefield all right there's every tendency that the soldiers or the military of the uh from the Ephraimites will have accompanied that ark to the battlefield but when they got there when they saw when they saw perhaps danger they saw the onslaught from the camp of the enemy what happened the bible said they turned their back and when they say they turn their back that history tells us that many Ephraimites were killed God does not want you to turn your back to the enemy you confront the enemy you are prepared by God to fight to confront the enemy it's not a matter of saying well I'm not going to fight the devil whether you fight the devil or not he's going to fight you and eh, well if i don't some people say if i don't talk about wishes and wizards they will not come near me who told you that you are the first casualty in your place of work in your street anywhere there are forces and agents of satan everywhere but you must understand that as a christian you are prepared for every season there is a purpose for your life you cannot afford to turn your back you know from the enemy you cannot afford to turn your back in the day of battle and that is first summary chapter 4 verse 11 that i was uh, referring to that and the ark of god was taken and the two sons of eli Ophni and finim first were slain they were slain verse 19 tells us he says and his daughter-in-law finim's wife was with child near to be delivered and when she heard the tithing that the ark of god was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead she bowed herself and traveled for her pace came upon her and about the time of her death the women that stood by said unto her fear not for thou hast born a son <clears throat> but she answered not neither did she regard it and she named the child ichabod saying the glory is departed from israel because the ark of god was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband hallelujah said so the glory is departed ichabod why those who are supposed to stand to defend the ark of god were nowhere to be found Ophine and phineas sin has weakened their life that they could no longer stand in the office of priesthood they could not stand they have defiled themselves they were just going empty to the battlefield they were no longer prepared they have lost their formation they have lost the grace they have lost the anointing and no wonder they died and that same day their father eli who did not rebuke them who did not correct them who did not do what he's supposed to do the father also died and the grandchild that was to be born when the child was born and the woman said after the the, the husband has said, ah, the glory has departed from israel why because people that are supposed to stand they turn their back even the ephraimites also the soldiers then turn their back hallelujah and as a result the hack of god was scattered away praise the lord let me tell you this that dream 
that glorious dream you have is an ark. Waiting to be made manifest. But why is it that the dream is scattered away? Why is it that, that your future, beautiful future, is as if it's not coming to reality? It is because something has gone wrong. It's because that there is a turning back. You are turning your back from something that you used to stand for before. Hallelujah. I will mash out some points. Number one, when you allow discouragement to prevail in your heart and you cave in, then you are turning your back in the day of battle. If you allow discouragement to weigh you down, the fact that I know money, business is not doing well, this and that, I don't even understand. And you allow discouragement. Discouragement is an instrument of the devil. It's an instrument of war to fight against your standing point. And because you are not sensitive, you turn your back. When you don't do something, when you're supposed to rise and fight, you are turning your back. Why are you not in the church? Some people are not in the church today, they will have reasons why they are not in the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it is discouragement, it's a way of turning your back from the battle. What you are prepared for, you have lost that ground. Number two, when you begin to lose your convictions about the Bible, about the faith, about the Bible doctrine, about holiness, and you fail to take your stand for the truth, <laughs> I tell you, you are turning your back in the day of battle. I repeat it. When you begin to lose your convictions. Things you used to stand for. Do you still stand for it? Things you used to believe. Do you still believe it? Praise the Lord. Because others are doing it. Amen. Some people say. ah, This is our church. Everything is so it's, it's hard. Everything is tough. I was talking to somebody today. I said. If you find yourself oh, in some churches like that and say, uh -huh. hey, are these not Christians? Everything is, uh, is uh, just our church. It's too hard. <laughs> praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord, church. I'm not saying they are not church of God. I'm not saying they are not people of God, okay? But you see, some people want things easy. Where you can paint up, paint down, high latches, everything put shame on your leg and you know I was reading something that the history of shame on the leg is for mark of slavery amen go and read it everything you do go and read about it so Jesus set you free you are still a slave because of fashion you put shame on the leg it's not enough on the neck you put it on the leg and say ah, let's do that let's just say ah, God does not care he doesn't care about your physical it is your heart <laughs> you don't understand that God the Bible says wash first the inside of the cup then what the outside shall be clean the reflection of your outward is one of the proof of what is the state of your mind some things you, you do you don't need it in this church we don't we don't give rules and regulation but we preach moderation be moderate in what you do let the holy spirit guide you do away with excesses you don't dress to kill you don't dress to impress anybody you don't need accolades from anyone you should understand that you are prepared for a purpose your life is 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 is, is for is for god is prepared to do the will of God to make a mark in your generation alright to be able to stand your ground and be able to confront you know the battles of the enemy that you are prepared for times like this and I tell you Yoruba says the one that is being looked upon does not look at others when any time who if you know that yes my life I'm at the stage of life I'm at the theater everybody's looking at me then you must behave yourself in relation to your convictions 
but are you losing your bible convictions have you losing the convictions of your faith because you read some things some pastor are doing something it does not matter it does not matter what matters to you before you say it doesn't matter again something you will not do before now you can now do it again i say well everybody is doing it it is only god that knows heaven that will know who will be who will be saved is that your sermon is that the new message you are carrying all around now you see when you begin to lose your conviction when you begin to you know you, know, you begin to fail in the place of the doctrines of the bad teachings of the bible and you fail in the area of holiness you begin to allow the little little flock that spoils the vine to creep into your life okay and your christian life is being weakened you are turning your back and it will be dangerous number three some are the first appearance of difficulty when they hear about other christians experiences in persecution in standing for the truth they develop a chicken heart and turn their back on the truth what am i saying is that some people when they hear the persecution of the saints what some christians are saying, ah is this how tough this christianity is because when you are coming in what they told you is that it's bread and butter when you give your life to jesus no problem everything is sweet but the song of the choir said the god of the mountain is the god of the valley which means there is a valley time there is mountain time there are times god of the of the dark is the god of the light you are prepared for times like this. there are times you find yourself if you are well prepared and you understand that you are prepared for such a time you find yourself you will not turn your back you will stand and you will confront the enemies you know that the season will soon pass over hallelujah and i will not give in i will not give up so you don't develop a chicken heart and say ah how can we continue ah, if somebody is failing you read some things in the newspaper that may you almost throw away your faith and say if all those you know of reason now we are reading some you know from america some of the uh the the pentecostal leaders in america divorcing after about 30 years or 30 something years of marriage you know divorcing and say ah if such a person because these are the people you listen to online who preach faith and say wow if these people can can divorce Ha! Ah, 30 something years can i carry on with my wife some of the challenges we are having is it not going to lead to divorce you're already turning your back you are making human being your standard you are forgotten about the bible teachings you are forgotten about that god supply grace for those who need it hallelujah what kill others is not supposed to kill you but because some people are failing you have rated them so high internet is a place where you read some things it can make your heart to fear am i right i begin to say ah when yeah the pastor so so and so they did this and that the general versus so and so they did so and so so this is what they do against church members don't you read all these things online and begin to see people saying what they suffer in the hands of their general overseer how they went to prison how they were persecuted how they were punished how they were this and that you say and these are the people that when they when i mean that we are seen as the frontliners but let me tell you jesus remains our standard say amen looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith jesus the Alpha and the omega of our faith jesus the starter and the hand of our faith jesus the hay and the seed of our faith every other human being they are playing in the theater of life anything you see that is good you pick it all right if it is a pointer to jesus paul said be ye followers of me as i'm what followers of christ he got to a place when he was talking to the galileans you know in the book of galatia he said if it is another angel or us me inclusive that come to preach another gospel than the one that you have had we have preached before say let that person or angel or all, let us be accursed what he's saying excellent is that jesus is the standard if i change tomorrow that does not mean you should change because somebody a pastor is going to hell does not mean you should go to hell because somebody is hearing 
is going to, you know, erratic or erratic teachings, that does not mean that you are going to change your doctrine, your belief system. You must stand in the faith of the Bible, looking at Jesus as our as your standard. And when you are in an environment, when you see other brothers, other Christians, the pastor, the ministers, you know, that, that, that you can look at their life, there are things to learn, there are things that you are not there yet, but there are things you can learn from them. Now, fellowship with such will learn from them. If the lifestyle can be traced to Jesus. Are you following? Praise the Lord. Number four, some professors of the faith fight a little longer some starts started very well they will fight they will try maybe that's how you started you are fighting a little longer you did not give up that's why you are five years in the faith 10 years in the faith 15 years in the faith or more years in the faith but because they get to a point they can i mean for a year they can stand the jeers and jests of the old companions some people make jests of you and some people say i am a christian also your own is too much they will say so many things and um, maybe you have been able to cope and say well i know i am forging ahead it doesn't matter if i'm criti if i'm criticized if people make jests of me i'm going on but you can get to a point that the society will deny you your benefits how many of you understand what i'm saying they will deny you what is duly yours because you do not join them and maybe at that point you are now turning your back privileges opportunities they begin to deny you if it is the place of work when they are considering for promotion they will not promote you if it is in the area of business opportunities you know would be they will deny they will deny you of opportunities you have been standing you have been professing the faith it doesn't matter but now it seems that the battle is increasing and you are turning your back <laughs> job said even though he slays me yet i will do what i will trust in him i will maintain my home way before him whatever we are passing through in this world people of god it is temporal if you leave that walk even if they sack you you will still survive is somebody hearing me you will still survive if they point that okay they not they know they only deny you they push you out of the way <laughs> if god allows them it is for them is for you to step into another level of glory that you will look behind you will see them and they will begin to look you at the mountain top god knows what he's doing you have no reason to turn your back you must understand that you are prepared for a time's like this Is somebody getting it number five the Ephraimites as Joshua has set the example to be a valiant uh, man they were also valiant men conquered Canaan and driven out the Canaanites that left some believers suddenly gave up in well, now let me repeat it the Ephraimites as Joshua they were sent to be example Joshua set an example to be valiant men they were to conquer Canaan. They are to drive out the Canaanites that left. Some believers today, they are just like that, suddenly gave up in striving against sin. Hello? Let me tell you, when you are born again, there are Canaanites that are left you must have to deal with. We are saved by grace. You confess your sin, God forgives you. But to deal with the sins that want to raise up head, you have a role to play. Is somebody following me? Are you there, church? You know, you are saved by grace. You don't pay anything. Your sins are forgiving you. But those sins will still knock at your door. God has forgiven you. But yet, these things are sins are still around the corner. Hello? Ah, the picture of your boyfriend before you give your life to Christ is still in your album, isn't it? Is the Holy Spirit that will come and remove it from your album? The picture of your girlfriend is still there. It's not just a friend, but I'm talking about the sinful friend. You know what I'm You do all the sort that you have done together. And there is no way you see that picture that your mind will not go back. You get my point? Hey, damn it. Mm. 
You don't want to answer. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I remember in those days, Punch, page three, girl. How many of you remember Punch in those days? And at another time, Son also was copying them. When Son started, page three, girl. They put one Jezebel lady on a whole full page. All right? You know? They put it, said girl. They put it there. When Christians began to stop buying punch, you know, Christians, we, if we take our stand, our society will bow. Christians block ministers, begin to preach what kind of nonsense, and we stop buying punch. Punch will remove it. Who tells you that our society cannot change if we take our stand? But because there are a lot of compromises. Hallelujah. When they are advertising joy soap in those days, hey, joy girl, they are not those kind of things, and they have a, a locks, all those kind of almanac. Do you see them any longer? When they will put one Jezebel there who will open her lap or open this, open that, and people will put it at the you know calendar of their house. I don't know a hotel I was in Abuja. I go to that hotel in Abuja. And uh, on the top of by side of the bed, there is one girl. They want the lady. <laughs> Praise God. So that when you wake up, you see the you see the picture. Amen. When you want to sleep, you see girl. And you want to wake up, you see you, you see girl. The spirit, do I know the spirit that is behind that decoration? Hallelujah. And before you know it, that spirit will begin to trail you where you are. You begin to have bad dream. Praise God. Immediately when the house uh, keeper, you know, followed me, took my thing, I said. I removed the picture, I put it down, I turn it. I said, Auntie, when I go, you can put it back. He said, Yes, sir. Praise God. I said, No, I am not giving to this. I don't need it. Put down the picture. A very large picture. I said, When I go, you can put your at least I have bought the hotel room for this period of time. I can decide what I want there. Is that not so? But you see, many of you don't know that you must fight against sin. You are the one that says you are not going to commit sin. Sin is not saying it's not going to it's not going to be available for you. Hallelujah. Look at Hebrews 12, verse 4. What do they say? Hebrews 12, 4 says, Ye have not yet what? Resisted. Let everybody have that scripture. Note that scripture. Look at it. Can we read together one to go? Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against what? Some people are not reading it. All of you, look, leave the children. Read this thing. Read it. One, two, go. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Which means you must fight against sin. He said, You have not resisted. You have not fought against sin to the point that you are ready to die. That instead for me to compromise and do what? I want to die. It's better to die for something than to die for nothing. You must strive against sin. So you must not just chicken out and begin to allow all sorts. Battle against sin is a continuous battle. Is somebody hearing me? Oh, somebody will say, well, when you are saved, it is by grace and so because of that, you are saved forever. All those things are just half truth and plenty lies <laughs> amen they are half truth and what plenty lies we know God can save us to the uttermost we know that when you are saved your sins are forgiven you are a new creation there is no doubt about that but the Bible tells us that sin shall not have dominion over us it's a promise but to, actual, uh, to actualize that promise you must strive against sin you must make sure you raise a battle against him. Somebody hearing me? Hello? I don't know what is making you to lie. Strive against him. Fight against that spirit of lie. Whatever is making you to, be, to, I mean, to, to push into fornication, strive against it. When your boss in the place of work begin to Hello? When begin to play with you and beat your buttocks. Oh, guy, I don't like it or you like it. Oh, guy, I know, guy, you know, I am a Christian. Yeah. How many pastor's wives 
that have slept with their boss in the place of work? How many Geo's wife that are falling into the same trap? So when you say so they, 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 they part your, your boss and you now say, oh God, and you smile. I said, God, I don't like it. You like it. If you don't like it and you want to strike, say, sir, what have you just done? Don't let it repeat itself or else I will disgrace you. I am a Christian. I don't give room for nonsense. I said, are you talking to me? Yes. If it is on my faith, I don't joke with it. If you try it again, sir, I will call God against you. I can obey you. You are my boss. I give in whatever you see. I've been, I mean, serving you. I can serve you and do all that I need to serve. But when you want to cross the line against my faith, sir, you will see the other side of me. Will that person repeat it the second day? If you want to pass, you can, can begin to persecute you. And he wouldn't want to disgrace himself also. Because people say, ah, why are you doing this to this person? Now, you have drawn the line. But he, but he beat your buttocks and you say, <laughs> he says, hey, son, I don't like it. Too. Uh, you like it. You will do it again and again. And men don't just give up until they get what they are looking for. And after they got what they are looking for, they throw you off like a part of card striving against sin you must turn you must not turn your back against your conviction number six when they turned their back Canaan was not fully won just like some in the church of God today fold their hands doing nothing the lost kingdom is not fully extended and just when you ought to be pushing far and wide the conquest of the cross enthroning Christ in our environment we turn our backs staying idle and doing nothing but we are saying that one of the ways for you to understand that you are prepared for times like this this is the time to push on the victory of the cross time to preach the gospel time to make disciple of nations but when you fold your hands all what you do you come to church here someone you go until another Sunday we don't even see you during the week that is not how to stand for something you must be able to stand for Jesus you must be able to be an instrument in the hands of God you must be able to push you know ahead the frontier be at the frontier of spreading the gospel of Christ when you don't do anything it is because you are turning your back from the commander of command of Jesus who says go into all the world and do what and preach the gospel to every creature so if you are in this church we can be more than this hallelujah between now and next Sunday if you decide that I must bring somebody to church God you must use me for somebody and you begin to pray about it in your place of work on your streets in your neighborhood and say ah God give me somebody that formerly to church and by the time we come next Sunday times two is the place not going to be filled praise God I say praise the Lord if you don't do it it's because you are turning your back from the truth from the command of Jesus Christ it is a responsibility if you fold your hands you do nothing it is a sign that you don't understand that you are prepared for a time like this and that's what you are doing and last but not the least one major tool for conquest is prayer number seven many have turned away from aggressive prayer life the enemy has terrorized them and have given up the fight alas they have lost territories and former victories they profess has almost been lost shout hallelujah there are victories God has given to us but many have lost the victory they are now sh a shadow of themselves why the temple of prayer has gone down in their lives prayer is one of the way to fight aggressive prayers not just maintenance prayer that you understand that I am prepared for a time like this righteousness must reign on my streets if there are armed robberies you know terrorizing your environment you allowed it the day you stand and say God I am standing for this territory this environment this estate in the name of Jesus every spirit of banditry every spirit of, uh, 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 of armed robbery I banish you in this environment I take charge of this territory 
that is how a Christian takes charge in the place of prayers. If you do nothing, nothing is going to happen. You say our society is bad. It continues to be bad because you are not doing anything. You have forgotten that God has prepared you for a time like that's why you find yourself in that place of work. <coughs> that's why you find yourself in that business. That's why you find yourself in that environment. But because you are turning your back, you are not doing anything, you don't understand that God put you there. Just like David find himself on the battlefield at that particular time to do something to change the narratives. When you take that decision and you pray, the kingdom of God will be brought down in your environment and the will of God shall be done as it is in heaven. Praise God. And if you don't continue to pray, I tell you, hey, the battles you have won, you may begin to lose it. It reminds me of the story. I don't know what I've shared it before, you know. Years back now, when I we were in Kogi, we have Kongi, Kongi, not Kogi, Kongi in Bodija there. The next street, um, my brother was also the pastor of uh, Mountain of Fire. So the person was the state pastor of Mountain of Fire. Now, like a, a friend I was in his house. And was sharing the story of his life. That when he was in secondary school, he gave his life to Christ. That was when Lukoya was a teacher in his school. And he gave his life to Christ. That he was a kind of person that um, no father, no mother to send him to school. He was just like that. And at that particular time, he was living with the, even the grandmother. And that, of course, taught him how to pray you know a teacher and then after that the uh, uh, doctor look you know travel out of the country for further studies say he was so frustrated when he got to form five about to enter into our institution he was so frustrated that one day he was going to commit suicide he left the house going to commit suicide and it was in that to maybe third Milan bridge to, to jump into the river he just asked somebody calling out Calling him, calling him, you know, you know, from the bus, from the moving bus. Coyote, the person called his name, and the person dropped, you know, at the vehicle, and now call him. You no, know, we no, the person was with his with his car. Call him, and he now parked, and he saw him say, "What are you about to do?" He now put him in his car, took him to his house, you know, taught him, raised him, you know, as a Christian. Praise God, and prayed. And they prayed and they prayed and he got admission to unilag he continued doing well but after some time some of those prayers he was taught to pray against powers in his foundation you know what i'm saying now to resist forces to fight or use prayer aggressive prayer to deal with the kingdom of darkness my brother got to a point that that brother now he relapsed and when he was now in the 300 level going to 400 level you know that maybe he uh, maybe wrote about uh, 8 or 10 papers in a semester all the 10 papers or 8 or 10 papers for that semester they couldn't see one script they could not see one script for you to know that forces you are to fight against you must not turn your back up and they said he did not uh, somebody that would teach his colleagues got to that point they couldn't see one single paper and of course he has to repeat a whole year and when he went to his pastor and that one said the prayers you are asked to pray have you Stop praying the prayer. He said, He believed that God has won the battle and this and that. He has stopped. Ah, he said, The household forces used to regroup. Household powers will, will regroup. Enemy devil does not give up. The fight you won yesterday is ready for another battle today. And then you have to begin to pray. But now he has lost a whole year. He has to repeat a whole year. When his colleagues move to the 400 level, he has to be there because at this first semester and second semester paper. <laughs> Praise God. And so he became like a bad boy in the department. You know, when you argue with lecturers that I wrote this paper, ah, and uh, he said, even the mother came around, you know, the old I mean, the woman and said, 
your boy your son is not serious again he's a bad boy they began to call him the name that is not and he's a christian you know man and i said what happened i said ah, look we know he used to carry guests all around he doesn't consider i mean was not consideration on his studies again his image was dented <laughs> all right he now became a bad boy so to speak you know in the department they said he didn't that up ah, the script you know the script in the institution you sign in at, at the exam baby when you submit you sign out is that not so they saw where he signed in all the papers and where he signed out praise god they say he didn't know it when he signed in he didn't know what to write so he abandoned everything he signed out <laughs> praise god. how can that be they form a kind of story you know around him so one day he went to the hod head of the department office and when he was in there after now you know gained back his prayer life began to pray and begin to you know to move forward he accepted, accepted his faith that he has to repeat the whole year. Now, he was in the HOD's office, and that one was re rearranging his office. He was now opening, you know, taking some things from one shelf. You just saw that there are some scripts in a particular shelf. He was throwing it on his table. What is this script doing here? Can you imagine? He told me himself. Not that I had. I was in his side. was telling me so when they were uh, just like, good afternoon sir oh good afternoon you know student you understand when lecturers does not like you you say good afternoon he will not look at your face is that not so it's just that that bad boy that unserious boy is around again okay he said like, good afternoon all right good afternoon and he was throwing those things on his desk the scripts that he saw on that ship and they and how did brother that, that uh, pastor how this man said he saw it that ah these are my scripts can you imagine scripts courses about 10 12 courses not from one lecturer different courses from different lecturers that thing pick all those scripts from the from the answer scripts of the lecturers to go and put it in the hod office there if it is one lecturer i say it's a mistake Abby. if it's one course you say it's a mistake pick it one by one to go and put it there praise the lord things do happen you must not turn your back fight I'm don't be discouraged fight you are created or prepared for a times like this if you do something victory will be yours when you now said this is my script and the the the, 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 the brother said your scripts what's your you know you don't write number you don't write name on the uh, answer scripts he said what's your matrix number and that he now mentioned his matric number he saw all those papers 80 70 you know because he's like a first class you know student he saw good marks and said matric number matric number. He now say he now look at him the hod was now asking are you a christian he said yes i'm a christian praise god shout hallelujah god just wanted to clean his record and he was telling later that the HOD got born again through him and was attending the same church with him and that is how he was able to gain back the glory I don't know the victory that you have lost I don't know why you are struggling in the journey of life things that have happened to you beautifully it seems the negatives are you know piling up maybe because you have lost your aggressiveness in the place of prayers maybe you are giving up you are turning your back but i want you to understand no matter what is happening in our nation no matter what's happening in your family no matter the challenges no matter the uproar around you understand like david that there is a cause i am prepared for a time like this and was able to confront the goliath and the goliath fell down he had no sword it was the sword of goliath he removed to cut off the head of Goliath. Hallelujah. What you keep what, what will destroy your enemies in their camp? It will destroy them. The arrow they are shooting against you will go back to sender. By their own arrow, their death will be announced. Their destruction will be announced. Everything gang up around your life will turn around. If you understand that, I will not give up. My marriage will not break. The challenge i'm having in my marriage i'm going to fight it through i'm going to walk in love 
I'm going to confront the kingdom of darkness. I will change where I need to change. My wife will change. My children will change. My home will be a model. If you stand your ground that I am prepared for a time like this. And victory shall be yours in Jesus' name. Have you gained something this morning? Shall we rise to our feet to pray? In times like this, you need the Savior. In times like this, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your for times like this whatever is happening around you is not an accident and God knows that you can confront them God knows that you are, you, are, you are built for a time like this and if there is any area you have to get more information to get built to open up to the Holy Spirit you have to do that you cannot afford to fail I want you to pray this morning and say Lord fortify me shall begin to pray in Jesus name Lord fortify me by the power of the Holy Spirit Lord fortify me increase my strength increase my power increase my ability by the power of the Holy Spirit can you call on the Holy Spirit what helped David was the anointing it was the Spirit of God that came upon him the day he was anointed to be king. The Bible said the spirit of God came upon David and the spirit of God departed from Saul. No wonder he could not confront Goliath. But the man who had the spirit of God, he came to the scene and he understood. He said, is there not a cause? I am prepared for times like this. I am here for a purpose. Can you tell the Lord, God prepare me. God prepare me. God increase your anointing upon my life. Is somebody praying there? God increase my prayer life. God anoint my prayer life. God give me strength in the time of battle. God help me, oh God. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon your life. I want you to open your mouth and pray. I want you to open your mouth. Pray aggressively. Let your aggressive in prayer, aggressiveness in prayer, let it start this morning. Let it begin again. Receive fresh anointing that I will not fail in my generation. That I will not fail in my generation. I will not fail. I will stand. I will not turn my back. I will not turn my back. The enemy will not kill me. The enemy will not have access to my life. Your sin, tell the Lord and say, God, I will strive against sin. By your grace, I stand against sin in my life. I stand against compromises in my life. Begin to pray. Lord, I stand for the truth. I stand for the war, your world once again. Is somebody pray? Is somebody pray? Receive strength this morning. Receive encouragement this morning. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. I want you to pray. Don't be discouraged. Receive grace. Don't give up. Your miracle is on the way. Don't give up. He that will come will come. The just shall live by faith. Ask for the anointing. Ask for the Holy Spirit in your life. One of the prayer Christians must be praying every day is for grace of God and more anointing of the Holy Spirit. Receive strength of the Holy Spirit. Strength in studying the word, in prayer. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill my life. Holy Spirit, prepare me for all the seasons of my life. Everything that is ahead of my life. Holy Spirit, prepare me 
for all the seasons of my life somebody pray tell the lord god almighty exercise yourself in the place of prayer marabu sikraba shanda kayegiribo rima sanda kaba the enemy wants to draw you back you must not turn your back you must not turn your back what you have said no to you must not go back into it you must not go back into any vomit you must stand for jesus you must stand against the, all the wives of the devil all the deception of the devil you are prepared and let the holy spirit prepare you more don't give up don't compromise don't deny the faith whatever happened the god of the mountain is the god of the valley the god will see you through at the end of the day you will not fail because he has the best for your life begin to confront every battle against your life this morning begin to pray against all the forces of darkness any power from your foundation that want to raise his head open your mouth and pray this buddy open your mouth and pray whatever is in my foundation i want to draw me back battles that i have conquered they want to raise up their head smash them in the name of jesus break all the powers of hell over your life break all the forces of darkness over your life whatever want to scatter your marriage begin to fight against such right now in the name of jesus they want to take you out of business confront the name of jesus fight against discouragement fight against the spirit of failure is somebody praying there let god hear your voice let god see your seriousness tell the lord i'm coming back i'm coming back coming back to my formation coming back to the place of my assignment i'm coming back to represent god to move the kingdom of god forward that the work of god in my hands will not be destroyed i will serve god in jesus mighty name we pray Correct you go back look at hear this sermon it is online on facebook christian information network you can hear this sermon hear it again until it sings and take time to pray and the lord god almighty will strengthen you in the